I do uh, magic and comedy, and, and I, I love magic, but I'm not a big fan of stage magic because it's so, um, it's so gay, isn't it, really? Isn't it? The Vegas gay magic show, I just, it's, it's, it is, all the prancing around. I've never been good at prancing, but I, I, love, uh, I love magic that happens right in front of you. Now, most of you have seen magicians produce a live animal, uh, usually a dove or a rabbit. There's a couple reasons for this. One, doves and rabbits won't bite you. The other reason is you can cram them into an incredibly small space. They won't struggle or make any noise while you shove them in there. Now, I'm going to produce for you a live dove from a deck of cards and an empty scarf with my sleeves rolled up, all right? You'll never see a magician do this up close like this, sleeves rolled up. Usually there's a lot of prancing around, the big gay white tigers and everything up there with them. <laughs> I might be wrong about the tigers, all right? I might be. All right, but a live dove, deck of cards, empty scarf. And when you see this dove, I expect some applause out of you people because I gave up most of my social life for this crap, all right? <clears throat> all right, here we go. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. It's just a lot easier that way, isn't it? Huh? You guys were amazed though, weren't you? The kids over here are like, I told we did it. Then there was just confusion, huh? I know, that wasn't very magical. Now, you know, magicians usually don't share their secrets with people. I want to show you, this is something fun you guys can do. Next time uh, you, go, you go into Walmart, which, um, actually, you know what, if you're ever just feeling down about yourself, um, go into Walmart and look around and you start thinking, you know, my life isn't so bad. <laughs> But go into the pet section, and this is a little, it's a little squeaky toy. It's a sheep. This is a pretty one. You can tell by their eyes. Um, my uncle Wyoming taught me that. And, and I get, you got to kind of violate him a little bit to get the little squeaker out. He, he taught me this, too. <laughs> right. So that, now, with this squeaker, you now have the ability to make anything you want squeak, right? For a dollar. That's good fun for a dollar, isn't it? Really? Huh? I could do that all day. For a dollar. That's some good fun. You kids should try that at school. Your teachers will love you. You guys are going to learn some stuff today. I'm going to corrupt the youth of America here tonight. You're going to see it. All right, here's, here's what you do. Next time you go to McDonald's, you go in where all the kids are playing in the ball pit, you pick up one ball and, and you make it squeak. And you throw it back in there, you go, all right, $10 and a Happy Meal for whichever kid finds the squeaky ball, go! Those stupid little bastards, they'll spend like three hours in there sorting them into piles, trying to find the one that squeaks. It's like a three hour babysitter, really. It just. <laughs> All right, guys, next time, next time you get a physical and your doctor's checking your prostate. <laughs> hey, back off, all right? If it's squeaking, that's too far. <sighs> when you get home, your dad will explain to you about your prostate, okay? <clears throat> He'll draw you some pictures. Oh, he wants to know now, huh? <laughs> Just point to it, Dad. I'll get to you guys in a minute. <laughs> all right, this is uh, ladies. You don't feel left out. Next time you get a mammogram and they have your boob all squished in there. Huh? They'll remember you, won't they? They're going to have a story to tell. You'll have a story. Everybody wins. For a dollar. What? It was actually 97 cents. You can't beat that for a dollar. That's a... That's good fun. <laughs> My sister has a three-year-old and a cat, and I made the cat squeak for him. I thought that would be funny. <laughs> we found the three-year-old in the closet about an hour later, just squeezing the hell out of the cat. <laughs> That's a good use of a cat. 